What's good, beautiful people? Uh, I have been missing in action for a reason. So, yeah, I moved to Saudi Arabia. Let's get straight to the point. Why? Why did I move to Saudi Arabia? I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Okay. Honestly, honestly, when I left Korea, I worked in Korea for three years teaching English and then I came back home. I came back home to no job. So I was staying with my mom till I got back on my feet and I was looking for work and I, you know, I was traveling a little bit in between there, maybe about once a month since I had been back um, in March and I was looking for jobs at home, interviewing about, you know, one to three times a month, but not really getting any offers and I was also looking for work abroad applying to places like Colombia and you know I was interested in Spain and just looking for different opportunities because part of me really was still attracted to the nomad life right and living abroad and teaching abroad as well because I really enjoy teaching and I had been seeing a lot of jobs on Saudi and I was like meh, meh, meh. but Recently, a lot of people I know have moved here and they say they really like it. And the more I asked questions, the more it felt like, okay, this is feasible. I could probably manage in Saudi Arabia. So here are some quick facts about Saudi Arabia. Number one, let's not be, let's not jump to conclusions and let's not be stereotypical in assuming that it's a, it's a bad country. Uh, so, but here, here are some of the facts. So they do, it's a country of Islam. Okay. And they practice it religiously to, to, with all puns intended. Right. So they're very, they're one of the strictest countries on practicing and enforcing the Islamic ways and Islamic beliefs on their people. So with that being said, what you see me in right now. Okay. This in Saudi Arabia, Arabia is called an abaya. This is called an um, a haji, and women have to wear this in public. Now, a lot of expat women don't always cover their hair in public, but they do have something called religious police that they will shake you down. They will shake you down and make sure that you are following the Islamic rules. Another thing is that men and women have separate entrances, separate businesses, and are not to interact in public or at all really, but you know, people do it on the low, unless they're family, unless they're family. So if you are married to a man or if you are with your brother, something like that, you can be seen in public. Otherwise, you should not, you should avoid doing that. Now, again, with expats, we can get away with it a little bit, but every now and then, the religious, if the religious police roll up on you, they might check you and be like, show me some ID, how are you all related? And what else is there? Um, so separate entrances, for example, at the KFC, there's an entrance for women and then there's an entrance for men. And let me be more specific. There, the men's entrance is single men and then the family entrance is for families and single women. So there's that. What else are some of the big things? Oh, women can't drive here. Uh, what else? What else? What else? If I think of other things, I'll mention it along the way, but I think those are some of the major things. Oh, liquor is illegal here. Liquor is illegal. And uh, that's all I can think of right now. Those are the major things that put a lot of Westerners or a lot of people who come to this country off because we're just not used to those extreme um, rules, so to speak. Now, with all that being said, how, what I've, I've had very little interaction with Saudis. I've had more interactions with a lot of, uh, what do you call them? Ex, expats, foreigners, immigrants, whatever you want to call them. And, but the little interaction that I have had with Saudis, um, they're really friendly, really nice, just like everybody else. And the men, some of the men dress in normal clothes, 
but some of them in dress in the all white. Um, I don't know if what theirs is called, if theirs is called in a bio or if it's called something else. And then with the, here in Saudi, they wear the checkered uh, red scarf on the head with, with the little black thing around it to keep it down. I've seen a lot of men wearing that. Um, but in, in this place where I am right now, I'll get to that later, and in uh, Damam, the place that I was the first time, being out in public, it has not been an issue. Now, again, I haven't been out in public a lot, but being out in public so far, it hasn't been an issue. Now, why I decided to come to Saudi Arabia to teach English was because I wanted to. I wanted a job. <laughs> I was tired of being unemployed, and my money was running out. So it was. It was time, you know. Now, will I admit that I was a little desperate? Yeah, yeah, I was. But I also wanted to accept this challenge to accept this challenge of going out and doing something different and quite frankly i think it's kind of dope to say i i, I lived in saudi arabia uh, because it's a closed country and you have to have an invitation to come here this is not a place where you can come for tourism um without having a reason like without for uh being here for work or visiting family so just keep that in mind um, but the other reason also was to learn about the culture. Like once I started to get my mind, wrap my mind around saying, hey, maybe I will consider a teach, teaching job in Saudi Arabia. Then I was like, all right, all right. Yeah, I would love to learn more about the Saudi culture, like the real deal and more about like how they live here and more about the land, seeing the places, the historic you know, we, they don't call them tourist sites, but some of the historic landmarks or whatever it is that Saudi has to offer. And, you know, I also wanted to just get away <laughs> from Milwaukee for a while. I mean, things were starting to become really mundane. And again, living at my mother's house and not having my own transportation, it, it becomes, um, it just puts a damper on on, it cramps. It was cramping my style. It was cramping my style, and I just wanted to get away and, and be free again. Cause that's me. I'm a free bird. I like to fly away. So this is a two-part video. It's about why I moved to Saudi Arabia, and it's about taking risks and making mistakes. Now I'm gonna make a part two. You could call it a part two to this video or the second half of this video, where I will be telling you all the low down of what went down here in Saudi Arabia. And I've only been here for like, what, 10 days? Honey, it got real. So tune in and stay tuned and do whatever it is you need to do. Because yeah, I'm going to break it down for you in another video. But real quick to summarize it, because I know I've been talking for a minute. Um, taking risks. Do that shit. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna bounce back. Maybe you might have like some really dramatic, traumatic experience where you you lost everything, but usually that's not the case. Usually the case is you lost a little face, you know, a little pride, a little ego. But you never know where risk can take you. Korea was a huge risk and it turned out to be an awesome experience that gave back in so many ways. Um, I could list a number of other things where people are like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. Oh no, don't do that. Girl, why do you want to do that? And I would do it and it would be so rewarding for me or it would open up so many other doors for me. So be okay with taking risks, even if it makes you look stupid. Now, what do we call risks that make you look stupid? We call those mistakes. Yeah. So I ain't gonna lie. Once once the dust started to settle when I got here, I was thinking like, what did I do? And I was also feeling like, where is my life going? And I was also feeling like, why am I the age I am and I'm living like this? You know? But listen, life can be fucked up sometimes and it's what you make it and having been at my first location here and talking to the <laughs> array of characters that was at the uh dorm dormitory that i stayed in people come from all walks of life and people have all different experiences and people have all different levels 
and depths of appreciation. And that was a reality check for me. I have so many things to be grateful for that sometimes I just take it for granted. And instead of working, working, building those things up, building the things that I have up and saying, yeah, 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 this is awesome. I'm like, no, 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 that ain't nothing. I need some of that. And, and how am I going to get that? And why don't I have this? You know, and we all do that. But I guess if we do, for those of us who do, we need to check ourselves and be like, no, actually, you're good. Actually, you're good. And you don't need to compare your life to your friends. You don't need to, you know, you don't, you don't need to live up to your own expectations sometimes. Now, listen, I'm not saying settle and be a loser. I'm not saying that. But I think sometimes we set expectations for ourselves that is not good for us or that that doesn't really serve us or that are our hollow goals. Um, and the truth of the matter is, I long time ago, when I was really young, I would always tell myself, I don't want to live a normal life. I don't want to live an average life. And I have always... <laughs> or at least in many instances, taken, um, chosen the path, less, you know, less taken. What is, how does this expression go? Whatever. I have always chosen to try things that are unorthodox or that most people have never done or that have been like a part of my wildest dreams or that have been just for so, kicks, yeah, right? When you take the road less traveled, expect to come across a lot of bumps and a lot of detours and getting lost, you know, because you, you're not doing, you're not taking that well-paved road. You're not doing what everyone else is doing. You're not living that cookie cutter life. You're not stepping, in, stepping into the foot, footsteps of others who have come before you. You are, you are making your way, you know, and that's what I have to remind myself. Honestly, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to, to, to be here, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, but all of life's risks that we take, all of the disappointments, all of the mistakes are just plot twists to our bigger story, right? And so this is a chapter in my book, right? And this is another plot twist <laughs> to my crazy ass story. <laughs> And, you know, roll with it. Roll with it. Because how many people can say that they've been to, I've, I've lost count now, but somewhere to, from 20 to 30 countries. How many people can say that? How many, you know, I'm not going to go down the list of things that I've, that I've done, but I've done a lot of awesome stuff. Um, and I'm sure you could look at yourself and say, I've done this that other people haven't done, or I've done this that made me proud that I did it. It doesn't have to be about what other people did or didn't do or have or don't have. But yeah, um, so that's where I am right now. And I'm trying to work my way into a better space because right now, mm, it ain't, it taint what I want to be, honey. It ain't. <laughs> about to get into that in the next video the, i know this video is long but the next video might be even longer because i got some stuff to get off my chest honey normally when i do these videos i try to keep it straight i try to keep it you know simple and i try not to you know cuss or do anything that's like politically incorrect i try to keep it basic and i try to you know create build bridges and connect people and i'm not about to not do that but you might hear a few cuss words and you might see a little bit of extra character in this video and in the next video i'm just saying because i got some stuff i got to get off my chest ah, stay tuned boo boo stay tuned all right deuces what the fuck